So how do Bitcoin miners actually get paid? Let's talk about the proof of work algorithm. Hey Jerry. Oh, hey Elaine. How's Picture Girl? Picture Girl broke up with me because she thought I was using her just for the milkshakes. <laughs> you think that's bad? Look what I had to do for Moody U. <laughs> but Elaine, you're an editor. <laughs> <laughs> I only take the ones from Moo to you. That way I can drink a little bit of the milkshake on the way to the customer. Like a service charge. <laughs> That's brilliant. I feel like I'm in the room with Lex Luthor. <laughs> it's not so bad. It only gets busy when a girl's suffering from a breakup. Or when Bridgerton's on. <laughs> I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta take this one. This is my third and final video on blockchain, NFTs, and proof of work. So if you haven't watched my first video on blockchain and you're trying to follow along at home, please click up here somewhere. There should be a link and watch my first video on blockchain and follow along because everything we're doing here builds off of that first video on blockchain. Now the code for this is available on my GitHub or my website. Uh, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or Twitter and like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below if you got something interesting to say. Now the code we're about to write isn't the exact code that we use to figure out proof of work in Bitcoin, but you gotta build a model rocket before you build a Saturn V. So let's revisit our block. Now, unlike the first example, this block actually has multiple transactions in it. I think for regular Bitcoin, uh, it's like 4,000 transactions per block. For this example, we're gonna do five transactions per block. Now when the transaction pool is filled, we have to hash that block and move on to the next block. But how do we actually afford to do this? I mean, it takes time and money and electricity to process transactions on a computer. Who's paying for this? Well, the miner pays for it and the miner earns his money by getting rewarded with cryptocurrency whenever they successfully hash a block. But who rewards them this cryptocurrency? They reward it to themselves. The very last transaction in the transaction pool is the miner awarding himself cryptocurrency out of thin air. So you find the block, you award yourself the money out of thin air, and then everybody confirms that your math is right and you get that money. Now do you see why the skit for this was Seinfeld? Cryptocurrency is money out of nothing. So let's talk about reward for a minute. Roughly every 10 minutes, a new Bitcoin is found or solved or mined. And every 210,000 blocks, the reward goes down by half. So way back in 2009, the reward was 50 Bitcoin. Then roughly four years later in 2012, the reward is 25 Bitcoin. Four years later in 2016, it was 12.5 Bitcoin. Today, it's 6.25 Bitcoin. And in 2024, it'll be 3.125. Now, you know how I keep using the words solving a block? Well, remember two videos ago back in part one where I talked about the nonce or the number only used once? And we weren't going to use it now, but we're going to use it later. Well, it's later now, but we'll talk about the nonce after we see what Elaine is up to. Boop, 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 boop. DoorDash! Hi. Hi, your milkshake? Thanks, I really needed this. Aw, break up? break up with my boyfriend. Yeah, at least Bridgerton's on. <laughs> Did you drink my milkshake? Oh, oh. You've got whipped cream on your... I just, I haven't waxed in so long. Thanks for pointing it out. I'm gonna get you fired! <laughs> <laughs> hey, Disher! You're fired. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about the nonce or number only used once. Now, if we just used a regular hash, anybody could do it, and the person with the fastest computer would always win. But let's say we have to find a hash that starts with a single zero. Well, the hash of the current block relies on the hash of the previous block plus the transaction data, and that gives us just this hash down here. So how do I make this hash start with a single zero? Well, I have to add on to the hash. And that right here, this zero, 
is the nonce. Now, this doesn't produce the hash that we need. This says five, not zero. But what if I increment this to one? Hmm. Well, what if I increment it to two or three or four or five or six? And we keep doing this essentially with a counter until we find the hash that starts with one zero. And that's essentially solving the block. The nonce is X. You have to figure out what goes into X that will start this off with a single zero. And this actually makes things fairer for miners because you can start with a random nonce or you can spread the work across multiple computers using ranges of nonces. If you've ever heard of pool mining, that's basically pool mining. Now, once you've actually figured out what this number is that will generate the hash with the single zero at the end, you can publish this nonce. And since every other Bitcoin miner has the data for the previous block, they have the transaction data and they have your nonce, they can run this themselves and go, oh, yeah, you're absolutely right. It does make that hash. You solve the block. Now, there is one more thing. Difficulty can actually change, and difficulty is defined as the number of zeros at the beginning of the hash. Bitcoin strives to solve a block roughly every 10 minutes. So if there's a lot of miners, you may increase difficulty. If there's fewer miners, you may decrease difficulty. And as of February 2022, difficulty is currently at 19 zeros. So let's build our model rocket version of proof of work. But first, let's see what Kramer and George are up to. Do 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 do. It's so hot in here. Oh, it's so hot. Once we get this engine working, George, once we get it working, we're gonna find that nonce. Oh, we're gonna find that nonce, George, I'm telling you. We just, I think this part, this part goes here. You think? Don't you have the manual? Man, the instructions are all in Serbian. Why can't I just use Google Translate on my laptop? Don't plug your laptop in, George. It'll pull the power. Serbian? Elaine knows Serbian. Elaine knows Serbian. Elaine. Yes, call Elaine. Call Elaine right now, George. We gotta find that Elaine, George. It's George. Assemble a Russian jet engine! If we're a Bitcoin rigger, we need your help! All the instructions are in Serbian! <laughs> Fine, I'll come, but you're paying me milkshakes! <laughs> okay, so here's our basic strategy. We're going to add transactions to the transaction pool. If there aren't four transactions, we'll just keep adding the transactions. But if we've hit four transactions, we reward ourselves the Bitcoin in the last transaction, and then we go find the hash. Once we find the hash, we add the found block to the blockchain. Now, this particular example is only going to be one zero in difficulty, but you'll be able to alter this example to have multiple zeros of difficulty. Okay, let's start by creating a new advanced blockchain class. So we'll go to blockchain video demo and we'll do add new item. And I'm just going to call it advanced blockchain high level. Okay, let's drop in our fields and our properties here. Uh, I'm going to create a new linked list of blocks as my blockchain. I'm going to create a list of string transactions. This is where we're going to hold all of our, all of our transactions. This is the transaction pool. Uh, I'm going to have a miner name. We're going to pass this in through a constructor. That way you can give yourself Bitcoin when you actually find the block. I'm going to create a transaction limit of five. So there's only going to be five transactions per block. And I'm going to create a reward of six. Everything here, we're going to use integers just to make things a lot easier. I'm also going to have a linked list returned as my blockchain. That way I can peek at the blockchain and see what's going on. Okay, now let's toss in a constructor here. Uh, we're going to pass in the miner name. That way you can give yourself Bitcoin when you find a block. We're going to instantiate the blockchain. That's the, the linked list of blocks. We're going to uh, create the list of transactions. We're going to send that uh, miner name that you passed in to the private field for miner name. And the last thing we're going to do is create that Genesis block. This is very important. We need that Genesis block. The next thing we have to do is add in the add transactions method. This will allow us to add transactions in. We're 
only going to add transactions until we hit four transactions. After that, we're going to drop in our own transaction of us giving ourselves Bitcoin and then go hash that transaction. So let's drop in that add transaction method. Now, this add transaction method is going to be passed a string of a transaction. So the first thing we do with this transaction data is we add it to the transaction pool up here. Now you want to check to see if the transaction has hit its transaction limit. So if we're one below the transaction limit, then that means the block is almost full and we need to add ourselves to the transaction and start hashing it. So let's do that. Let's drop in this last transaction. Minor name rewards minor name. And we're getting that minor name from up here. Now let's flatten all of those transactions. That way we have a single string that we're sending to the new block. And also let's take a look at the previous block's value. Because remember, the next block always uses the previous block's hash as a seed. So let's take the last value in the blockchain. And let's assign that to a new block just called previous block. This way it makes things a little more readable. Now that we've sucked in all the information we need, I want to clear out that transactions list. That way we can reset the transactions list and start accepting transactions again. So let's just do a transactions.clear down here. Now at this point, I think we should call out to another method to actually go find the hash information. So let me put a pin in this. And that way I can come back to it when I need to. And I think I'm going to call the new method um, find hash and return block. Now this new method is going to accept the previous hash and the transaction data. And then it's going to do a while loop and run through all possibilities of the nonce on a counter until it finds a hash that starts with a zero. So let's create that method down here. I'm going to make it private. That way we can encapsulate everything. So we create that method. We're sending in the transactions and we're sending in the previous hash. Okay, now let's fill this up with some private variables here. Uh, we're going to create the nonce, which equals zero. Remember, the nonce is the most important part. This is what we're going to increment. We're going to create a hash found because we're going to have to break out of the loop in some way. And we're going to create a byte current block hash that's actually going to hold the block hash. Okay, now let's create a while loop here. And the first thing I want to do with this while loop is increment the nonce. <laughs> If we don't do this, we forget to do this after we've done all of our other stuff. When we test this, we're going to be waiting for a, a long time. So this while is going to say, hey, if the hash found is not true and the nonce isn't equal to the max value, this is just a safety valve right here, just in case while we're testing, the nonce goes into an overflow state. Um, increment the nonce by one. And we're going to put our test code inside here. Okay, so step one is we hash the block. So we're going to take the previous hash, the transactions, and the nonce. We're going to hash that block, and that's going to get us the current block hash. Once we get that current block hash, now we test that current block hash with an if statement. And we're just going to say, hey, is the first value in the current block hash equal to zero? If it is, we're done. And all we got to do is create the block, just block, found block, new block with the current block hash, the previous hash, the transactions and the nonce, this is very important. We need to put the nonce in the new block because other people are gonna take a look at our block and verify that our work is correct by using the nonce and the transaction data and the data from the previous block. And then we just return that found block. Else we continue to loop. Now I just have to put in a return null down here. We're never going to get to this state, but it'll get Visual Studio to stop yelling at us. Now, normally we would handle this case uh, just in case we don't find the nonce or someone else finds the nonce and we need to stop what we're doing so we can verify their transactions and go on to the next transaction pool. But this is just a simple example, so that we're just going with this for now. Now, if you did want to extend this out a little bit more to solve more difficult problems or problems with multiple zeros, you'd probably put that code right here. Just have this call out to another function. And when you create the find hash and return block, just pass in the difficulty, which would be the number of zeros that you are looking for. I have that on my GitHub. So if you want to know how to do that, that's up there. All right, now that we're finished with that find hash and return block, let's go back up to our to-do over here. And let's drop in the code. 
do find hash and return block. We're sending in the pre-hash transactions right up here, and we're sending in the previous blocks, block hash. We're going to get back the found block. Once we get that found block, everything is as easy as adding it to the blockchain. Now we're done. We're actually done. We just did our proof of work algorithm. So let's run it and see what happens. Okay, so let me go back to my program here and let's uh, add in the new blockchain high level uh, along with four transactions because this should trigger after the fourth and we'll put a breakpoint right here. Okay, let's run this and we break on the add transaction. Now I just want to show you down here, AHL, as you can see, there's only one block in the blockchain, and that is the Genesis block, and that is to be expected. So now I'm going to continue past this. Let me hit continue here. And now we break inside add transactions. You can see my last transaction came in. Uh, because of that, my count is now at the limit minus one, so that leaves space for me adding in my, me awarding myself Bitcoin. Once we got that, we're gonna flatten our transactions and we're gonna go grab the last value for the previous block and clear our transactions. Okay, all that's done. Now let's go find that hash and return a block. Okay, so we just broke in find hash and return block. So let's step into this. Uh, we are in our while loop now and that uh, nonce is gonna keep increasing until we either find the hash we're looking for or we hit our max value. So let me just hit continue here and we'll take a look. The nonce is zero and the first item in current block hash is seven, eight. All right, well, that's not what we're looking for. So let's continue. I'm going to hit the continue button. This should loop back around. All right, now the nonce is one and the first item in current block hash is two, one, five. All right, that's not what we're looking for. So we continue. Now the nonce is two and the current block hash um, First item is 219. All right, again, we didn't find the number. So we're going to keep going and going and going. Let me take this breakpoint off, and I'm going to continue until we actually find the first zero. All right, well, that didn't take that long. We found it. And as you can see, the nonce is 70, and the first item in the uh, current block byte array is zero. Now, if we wanted to increase difficulty, we would say, okay, well, the first two array locations have to be zero, or the first three, or the first four, or the first five. So we found what we needed, so let's return and continue on through this. We uh, throw this into the found block, and we load it into the blockchain. Okay, so here's our actual readout. So uh, we see the Genesis block right here, and you can see up here the block hash of the Genesis block is 8AF0. And down here in the second block, we have 8AF0. There's our previous hash. The nonce that it took to make this hash over here is 70. So if I'm a processor and I want to verify that this block is correct, all I need to do is take this transaction data, add the nonce to it, add the previous hash, and I should get this. So this methodology where a hash is really, really hard to find, but very, very easy to verify is the cornerstone of essentially all cryptocurrency. Now, I know I didn't cover things like public key encryption and wallets, but I do want to show you something. This took me probably about 20 days to implement. I first started this on the 23rd, and I was working part-time nights, weekends, uh, just to try to develop the bones for this software and this video series. So if I just spent a little more time refining this software and coming up with the public key encryption and the wallets and creating multiple hashing servers, I could actually create my own cryptocurrency that could be traded on the world market. So that being said, be very, very careful when you're investing in new forms of cryptocurrency because the inventor could just be some guy in his spare bedroom doing it in his spare time. Now you understand blockchain, NFTs, and how proof of work works. Good luck on your next interview. Now let's see how Seinfeld ends. Do, 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 do. I don't think it goes in there. We found the nuts. noise. We, we found, found the nuts. nuts. We found the nuts. We found the nuts. We found the nuts. We found the nuts. We got to put it out there. We got to publish it. I've never found them before. Oh my God, it's so hot in here. Why don't you turn on the fan?
fire! No, Elaine! Don't touch the air conditioning! Um, milkshake. <laughs>